Thank you for having me. And um, wow, uh, I cannot imagine any organization getting a turnout of 350 registered on a Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me uh, here to talk about AI and um, and really about in the context of what we're trying to do in dentistry. My presentation is titled New Paradigms, Leveraging AI to, to Ignite Dental Practice Growth. And I obviously got started in AI by accident. I don't, I'm not a technologist by any means. I was a CPA. I started a hedge fund at the time. I was very interested in math. And when, one day I asked a question, uh, could I teach Alexa how to understand dentistry? This was eight years ago. And that's our journey uh, when we started in AI because we knew we were trying to solve uh, a problem that we saw uh, in front of our eyes. And we, we figured that Alexa at the time, we didn't know what Alexa meant was the right way to solve it. Um, before I go into the AI and the technologies and everything else, I'd love to kind of go through a little bit of the history of our industry over the last four years since the pandemic, because nothing has been like, obviously we're doing the Zoom because of the pandemic, because we're not doing Zoom as much. And I spent eight hours of my day doing a lot of Zoom. And, and, and really, uh, if we go back to 2020, uh, our timeline is is interesting, right? We stopped for a little while um, and all of a sudden there was uh, our growth stop. SSSG means same store sales growth and that's the, the terminology used in business. Uh, so our, our, our production stopped, we, we kind of stopped growing and we had tons of supply chain PPE issues. Uh, that was 2020. And then 2021 was kind of the resurgence. Everybody figured out the dentistry is is essential and everybody wants it. And all of a sudden, uh, there was a huge demand for dental services uh, across the board from all the patients and people were utilizing dentists more than ever before. Um, and um, obviously at, at the same time, we saw a big, big time staffing shortages. Um, 2022 was a continued resurgence. Staffing shortage continued. Uh, there was underutilization of dental services. There was a lot of burnout in the provider community. And but the patient demand continued pretty high. Inflation was uh, slowly creeping up, and 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 patient demand was absolutely absolutely at one of its highest in 2022. The problem was having providers. Uh, eventually, 2023 came about. The Federal Reserve has increased interest rates at a pace we've never seen before. All of a sudden, uh, staffing has begun to stabilize a little bit, but um, in order to grow the models, uh, in order to grow the dental offices and their revenues and production, uh, newer business models have, have evolved. And for the first time in dentistry, people are talking about a new business model uh, that that is coming out of the pandemic. And the pandemic has been an accelerator in kind of driving some of the new models in the industry, which are driven by technology and AI. Um, cancellations are rising and, and the need for new patients is definitely arising quite a bit. Uh, this year than ever before. And most of the larger groups that we deal with at Patient Prism are talking about where are the new patients? Are we, do we have the right patient mix? Um, so let me talk about the six trends that are happening in, in, in the dental world uh, that are affecting um, everything, that are affecting growth, that are affecting the way we deal with patients, that are affecting uh, the way we're trying to solve problems of growth and management of employees and 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 technology, uh, and these six trends are are, are literally uh, changing our profession as we know it. Um, the first one is the mapping of the journey. Uh, if you look at the greatest run organizations today in dentistry, what they're doing is they're figuring out a way to map the journey of the patient, where it starts, where it ends, and they're figuring out how to optimize that journey through the entire life cycle of a patient's relationship with the dental office. Um, that's becoming a very important part of part and parcel of what the new business model in dentistry is. The second big part of what new business model is, is weaponizing marketing. And dentistry has evolved to a direct-to-consumer um, model over the last 15 years. Clear Choice kind of was the forefront of that 15 years ago. And, and, and today, if you talk to high, super high growing dental practices, they're looking at technology in terms of they're implementing technology to calculate things like cost per lead, cost per acquisition, if you're orthodontist, so cost per start. What, is it, what does it take to get a new start in my office or a new patient in my office? 
business intelligence is an interesting uh, element. Uh, we've always had uh, analytics in our space, KPIs as we call them. We've had companies like Dental Intel and Jarvis over the years to provide us these, these critical indicators of our business's health. But what, what, what's happening now is that uh, there is a movement to, to not just look at hindsight. There is a movement in to say, can we take the hindsight and convert that into insight and then take the insight and convert that to foresight. So there is a huge movement around business intelligence and technologies leading the way AI, uh, machine learning are great technologies to be able to kind of figure out what the insight of that is. And I'll cover that in, in, in later parts of my lecture. Um, artificial intelligence, the topic that we're talking about today is the fourth biggest trend and pillar that that is absolutely taking the entire world by a storm. Obviously, all of us heard chat gpt fied over the last few years, but AI is absolutely becoming front and center uh, as, as, as a staple in a dental office in, in terms of both patient acquisition as well as diagnosis and case acceptance. And we'll talk about some of those solutions as we go along. If, if, if somebody were to hold a, hold a gun to my head and says, well, give me number one, number one thing that can help me grow my dental practice today, it's optimization of your schedules. And obviously there is no more, it, it, hygienists and doctors are not abundantly available. Uh, and, and there is a provider shortage and that's not gonna end anytime soon. And so what do we do, right? What do we do in an in a, in a era where demand outstrips supply by three to one? Potentially more, but at least three to one. So there is there is three more patients available for every appointment slot that's available right now in America. So there is there is a lot of thinking going around, figuring out how to optimize for schedules. There's lots of learnings from airlines, thinking about production optimization, and like how do we get the right patient in the right chair at the right time to produce the right amount of production per hour per clinician. So there's a lot of thinking around that, and technology is being utilized right now to figure that out. A revenue cycle is something we're going to talk about, a vendor, uh, a partner here uh, that, that, that's, being a, that's been absolutely the, um, one of the critical focus areas of, of collecting money from insurance companies. And we'll talk about that a little more of how AI and, and robotic process automation is affecting the revenue cycle. Basically, it's the ability for us to collect the money for the services we provide. Obviously, if we cannot uh, collect our money, we cannot do that. Uh, so with that in mind, with that context in mind, I want to bring technology, I want to discuss technology today in the context of our industry, in the context of what we're trying to solve. Because technology by itself uh, really is not the answer to anything, right? It, 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 it only matters if it helps us help us serve our customers better, if it helps us motivate our teams better, and if it helps us you know, produce good outcomes for our patients, for our practices, for our teams. And, and one of the big things I have seen done, and again, my experience in dentistry has been primarily in large enterprises. Um, and, and there's a lot of good thinking that is happening and permeating uh, the dentistry from, from outside of dentistry, whether it's healthcare, retail, fintech. And one of the big uh, one of the big trends I'm seeing from organizations that are really running a great, doing a great job at growing their offices and growing their organizations is mapping of the journey. And what I mean by that is understanding where does the patient start and where does the patient end and rather and, and comes for a reappointment. And what organizations are doing right now is that they're, okay, well, let's map the journey of the patient and let's create a set of KPIs, uh, use leveraging technology that allows us to understand what prevents the patient from moving forward, right? So if, if I'm searching online, uh, for a dentist near me, I don't see anybody on the first page as a patient that prevents me from moving forward. So, so if we need to understand, right? So we need to develop a KPI uh, according to how many visits and how many people click on our, our, our thing, that's a KPI. So as we move along the journey if we uh, of the F patient journey, if we can figure out a KPI, a key performance indicator that gives us visibility into every aspect of the patient journey, then what we've done is we have really figured out a way to grow faster, better, and cheaper. Instead of having to just spend more money on marketing or doing whatever it is or buying the next machine, whether CBCT, CIRIC, or, or whatever that might be, ITERO, what you're doing is you're figuring out the exact reasons why 
patients are not moving forward to treatment and better health. And then figuring out after that, after that is figured out and the KPIs are ready, then you're saying, I'm going to implement technology that's going to make that better. And I hope that makes sense for you guys. So I'm going to talk about a customer journey, a patient journey a lot because it matters for us if you want to grow our businesses. Uh, one of the big things I talk about at Patient Prism is a lot is, is, is a lot of the, the reason why we started our business was we knew that patients were calling dental offices, but but only a few of them were actually getting appointed. And, and it really started at the very top of the funnel where marketing was driving almost 100 leads, whether it's website visits or ad visits. People were visiting a, a specific dental office's website or ad, but only at the end of the day, only 90% of them were actually deciding to call. Of that, only 70% of them were actually answered, calls were answered. And of those, only 35% of them were booked. So the problem is, the problem was, and still is, is that as we generate more and more leads into the funnel uh, to drive, you know, as we talked about the first part of the journey was the online search. As we start thinking about how do we attract more patients into our mix, we have to leverage technology in order to fix these things. Understanding okay, where is marketing? Is marketing driving the right leads into the funnel? And, and again, there is AI technology right now that you can use to figure that out. Uh, are we number one answering phone calls? That's important. I mean, uh, right now, 35% of phone calls during business hours are actually missed. We're not answered, which is a huge problem. And then are we actually scheduling an appointment? Uh, so what we want to do is for the amount of leads we're generating, uh, we want to actually schedule almost 50. We want to see about for every 100 leads, we want to see at least 15 patients in our chairs. And, and today, the measurement just doesn't exist. So you want to obviously deploy technology uh, that, that allows you to measure that so that, you know what, if there's leaks in the top of the funnel, you're not really trying to spend more money to have more patients leak out of the system. Um, let's, let's go back a little bit. And, and I've spent a lot of time with uh, with uh, our clients in surveys. I've spent a lot of time with the Health Policy Institute at the ADA and, and talked about what, what is it that we're solving for today? And what we're solving for is patient health. And all we, that's, that's the reason why everybody's in dentistry. We want to make patients healthier. Uh, but, but, but understand, and, and instead of just adopting technology for the sake of adopting technology, why don't we first figure out what patients want and then figure out what technology solution is the right one uh, for us to get the patients in the door. So this was a survey we did of almost 2,000 offices in the last two years. And, and these were the six things, uh, seven things rather, uh, that patients wanted. And uh, this was convenient scheduling. They wanted availability. Uh, they wanted enjoyable in-office experience. They wanted plain talk, which is interesting. Um, they wanted aesthetic appeal and brand, uh, aesthetic appeal of brand and location. They wanted to talk to nice people, um, which is interesting and transparent pricing. Uh, that's interesting, right? So once you know, okay, in 2023, this is what people want. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, do you think convenient scheduling would have been uh, even even, even in, on the top of people's minds? Do you think uh, plain talk, people always like plain talk, nice people, it's always been there. Availability, enjoyable and office experience. Maybe, maybe the older generation before that didn't care about that much too much. They're like, all right, I'm gonna do this and get my stuff done. So we have to understand deploying technology in the context of what patients want. Let's let's learn more about what what drives some of these things. And we again, uh, the survey of two thousand offices, we said what drives patient retention because what we found out is almost thirty percent of patients are are going off the back door, and 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 you want to you want to obviously fix that leak at the bottom of the funnel too, by by figuring out what what drives patient retention. And, and, and there's two things. There is patient experience. And patient experience really is, is, is when I ask, you know, there's 100 people that says we want to feel wow. Uh, that's, you can't really translate that into a mathematical formula. But people want a wow factor. They want a relationship uh, with their dentist and their hygienist. And, and they want to feel good. And again, none of these can be quantified. But in order to drive patient retention, you have to be able to build trust. And trust comes from, from a whole bunch of factors, but, but the relationship and how you make them feel is going to be crucial in order to really drive the best patient experience. Again, 
to optimize that patient journey that we talked about earlier. Uh, patient access has become a huge factor right now. Uh, if, 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 if I could solve for patient access uh, right now, it'd be, I'd, I'd have a, a multi-billion dollar company, possibly more, um, because it has become the number one reason why dental practices are not growing. And, and, and patients are leaving your practice to go somewhere else. Patient access means convenience, availability, and ease of scheduling. Uh, and we had talked about what patients want in, in, in that and scheduling was, was, was one of them. So again, technology has a huge component in all of this stuff. So patient retention is important. New patient acquisition is important. Growth is important. We have to first understand what patients want and then figure out again, okay, here's how we're going to solve for it. That's how, that's how we got started in the first place. Um, let's look at the labor market right now. And, and I'm sure most of you have um, have suffered this and faced this uh, since pandemic. Dental posted a survey uh, of, of a couple of thousand practices and, and they found out uh, what we've all known along is that people are looking for new jobs in our practices. 39% at the front, 29% with billing, 18% of office managers, 12.5% of, of, of hygienists, 27% of dental assistants. Now we have a shortage and we have, have people looking for new jobs. And it, 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 it's, way, it's where, where our trends are going right now, right? People are, there is, there is this quiet quitting, there's this loud quitting, and then McKinsey did this whole survey on what's happening. Uh, there is the burnout factor. But, but again, in this day and age, if we, if we know this is the, this is the, these are the num top things that are happening with our offices, we have to figure out how to really get our people engaged and retain them. And if we're not retaining them, then we have to figure out how to train them in a way that's consistent, that enhances the patient journey and the patient experience. So, so that this, this is happening. This is, this is kind of uh, at the backdrop. McKinsey says 50% of people in healthcare are looking for new jobs, which is again, an unbelievable number, but, but I, I, I bet most of you are seeing that. Um, the AI, uh, the the ADA Health Policy Institute put some of these things uh, that that are interesting as well that that help us understand where we are today. Uh, the the number one the number one factor that prevented a dental practice schedule from at being at hundred percent, right? Uh, this is just last month was patient no showing and canceling in less than twenty four hours, and and that is becoming more and more. Um, I don't know whether it's a cultural trend because I recently read somewhere where where some of these younger folks are making three appointments for the same time. So patient no-shows and cancellations in less than 24 hours are causing havoc uh, on schedules. And, and, and again, we have to figure out what, what do we do with that, right? One of the things we developed at Patient Prism was is figuring out how to understand cancellations in real time so we can say, oh my God, I just had a patient who canceled a minute ago. Let's figure out how to fill that spot. Understanding that, a day later or, or, the, or the following day in our huddle doesn't really solve it because again, you still have to spend money on the fixed costs. Patient cancellations, less than 24 hours are a huge problem. Uh, not enough patients making appointment, that number is trending higher. So, so the number of new patients coming through the door uh, is, is going down, uh, especially in 2023, especially since the summer started. Uh, we'll see how the fall goes and everybody's waiting for the shoe to drop. I'm hoping it won't drop in dentistry, but that's that's a challenge. So managing cancellations and no-shows is a very important thing that we need to really worry about. And I think there's technology out there that can help us do that. Um, one of the big problems that I've seen across uh, this year, uh, especially since the pandemic, is that how long it is taking for a patient, a new patient to make an appointment. Uh, the, uh, the American Dental Association says the mean number of days is 21. Uh, and that's kind of interesting, right? If you can get your patient in within a week or two, uh, this is 21 days. Uh, should you be really, really even spending any money on marketing? You probably shouldn't, right? You should figure out how to improve capacity before you kind of figure that out. Uh, and patients are waiting on an average, on an average, they're waiting 21 business days, which is, which is I think, not an acceptable solution in our industry. Not that I have an easy answer to this. There are many, many different answers that people are figuring out, leveraging technology uh, to be able to get people in, uh, whether it's third columns, assisted hygiene, and many other things. But this is something that we need to worry about because if we can provide 
uh, patients an appointment when they need it. Remember, availability was a huge topic. Availability of when they wanted to come in was a huge thing for patients. Now, if our patients are waiting that longer, they're not going to show up. Um, the last uh, survey I had before I go into the technologies is going to be uh, what plans do most practices have today? Um, in order to grow your business, uh, raising my fees has nothing to do with technology, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. 72% of dental practices consistently over the last year are saying that they're going to raise their fees. And, and, and something to think about is, is obviously, as, as you think about growing your business and, and as you think about alleviating the pressures from labor costs, you want to make sure that you are focusing on your fees and your fee schedules as it relates to your PPOs and figuring out how can, can I can I can I add, you know, increase my fees by 10%? What would I lose and would I still come out ahead? Most people are saying that they would. Um, hire more staff, drop out of some insurance. Those those considerations are 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 becoming more and more valid as people want to work smarter and not harder. So with that in mind, you know, I, I wanted to really talk about these trends because again, everything that we're going to talk about in terms of technology, AI, machine learning, robotic process automation is going to be to solve some of these problems that we've seen. Um, because every time you, you, you take a piece of technology and use it to solve a problem that we, 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 we currently have, and very easily, you're going to see tremendous amount of growth uh, in your respective practices. So, so this is a slide that I created last year, and Planet DDS uh, uh, had, had produced a part of the slide. And, and, and what this is, is this, oh my goodness, look at this dental software ecosystem. Since this image was cleared by the Planet DDS, there's another hundred more companies that have been added here, right? And, and so the tech stack in dentistry is, it keeps rising and it keeps rising and rising and rising and rising. And, 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 and the question becomes is that, oh my God, what do I need? Uh, what do I need? How much AI do I need? How much technology do I need? And do I need to buy any and all of these solutions in order to make my, uh, you know, grow my practice? And it's overwhelming. Sometimes there's dental offices that are paying almost $2,500 in subscription fees for all the things that they have to do. One of the, one of the things that I have talked about um, and I've advised a lot of the DSOs and dental practices is that when you think about a tech stack, Think about number one, think about stack that's going to give you intelligence and not just data. Obviously, you need a practice management system and you have to pick one, but 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 pick things that allow you to consolidate a multiple solutions into one. And second, make sure that it provides you intelligence that gives you some action steps in order to make something better. So so it's really important for us not to get overwhelmed by by the stack, but but to take that stack and see and, and decipher which ones are the ones that are going to help me solve the problems that I do have. Um, who is in AI-driven solutions right now? Google Ads uh, are fantastic. They've got a great AI-driven uh, AdWords uh, uh, program where you can use AI to you know, figure out where to allocate your resources. Microsoft, as you know, uh, was an investor uh, in, in OpenAI and and I'm sure most of you are using ChatGPT, so it's a huge. Uh, they're making big strides in in AI and generative AI, for example. Uh, Google is also doing it with Bard. Um, Facebook is doing it with Lambda. Twitter uh, now X, uh, no longer Twitter, starting today, I think. Um, and they are leveraging um, um, at AI, uh, especially in in healthcare. And there is lots of different use cases for that. Patient Prism, the company I, I formed, uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is, is an AI provider in the space with conversational intelligence. Pearl, we're going to talk about Pearl today, Overjet, Denti. They're doing an immense amount of amazing work in figuring out the diagnosis and the treatment acceptance uh, by, by looking at uh, having AI look at radiographs and, 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 and really identifying things that we normally would miss. Um, Zentis and OrthoFX, I'm going to talk about them, and, and they are, they're doing, Zentis is doing great work in the revenue cycle management space by figuring out how to stop denial of claims and, 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 and standardizing EOBs. Uh, they're doing a wonderful job in that area. OrthoFX is a, is, a, is, a, is a fun company in the orthodontic space that's really driving orthodontics uh, in, in a way that leverages AI using iPhones and, and, and Android devices and and monitoring in a way that that we have not seen before. Uh, 
Daniel Monitoring, a great company out of Paris, um, is, is doing extensive work in the orthodontic space so that we can create more capacity, right? Uh, one of the big things about remote monitoring has been uh, how do you how do you see more patients uh, given that you only have so many doctors, so many chairs, and so many assistants. So I'm going to talk a little bit about them. I'm going to talk about four game-changing technologies that are really being implemented in organizations and dental organizations right now to really solve some of the problems that I talked about of access and availability and scheduling and 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 treatment acceptance and diagnosis and everything else. Uh, I'm going to talk about patient prism. Uh, full disclosure, I'm the CEO and founder of it. I'm going to talk about why we why we got into the, in, in, what what kind of problem we were trying to solve. Uh, again, I'm going to talk about these problems in the context of the patient journey. Patient prism is involved in the calling to book an appointment phase. Pearl is involved in the diagnosis and acceptance phase. Uh, um, so is so is uh, ortho FX is involved in diagnosis as well as exam billing um, is is associated with Zentist, which I'm going to talk about. And all these companies are really trying to figure out how to really optimize this journey um, for the patient, so the patient continues their movement towards optimal health. Um, it took us about eight years, about seven years, rather than 20 million phone calls, to to deliver the full promise of AI. And the full promise of AI in the context of what we did was, you know, the problem we were trying to solve was patients, we were spending money on marketing, dental practice were spending money on marketing, driving leads into the funnel. And in only 40 to 50% of them, at 60% of them at best, were actually appointing. And for a variety of reasons, you know, bad leads, you know, not enough training at the front, capacity, all that kind of stuff. What AI was was good at in doing this is that, you know, in the past, what used to happen is we used to train, we used to have recordings of these conversations and then have humans listen to it. And, and no humans ever got to all the calls. It was highly inefficient. By the time you figured out the patient had already gone somewhere else. So AI was a uh, specifically the subset of AI called natural language processing was a great way to analyze conversations that were happening between humans because NLP, natural language processing, the ability for a machine to understand human language. And, and so, so we deployed a solution that allowed us to quickly understand what was said, who called, what was said, and where the ball got dropped. So in, in the context of dentistry, we were able to record a conversation, analyze it instantly, and in less than one minute, right? Now it takes about 35 seconds. We were able to deliver intelligence at the footsteps of the office manager or the call center manager and telling them exactly what went wrong. And then they had an opportunity now to have a second chance to make the first impression, basically by calling the patient back and recovering that revenue that they just lost a few minutes ago. Um, unheard of, when we started this journey, uh, just six years ago, it used to take us three hours to do this. Uh, from six years ago at three hours, 35 seconds today, the journey of AI has been absolutely magnificent. Uh, so here's the technology that launched it, right? Deep Lens was this technology which took deep neural networks, which taught human uh, machines how to understand and behave similar to humans, not same, similar to humans. And we looked at some of the generative AI concepts that were coming out uh, early on, about two years ago. We combined those two things and said, if, if we can do this within a minute, if we can say, if a patient calls at nine and hangs up on the phone at 9.05, and in 906, if we can alert the office, alert them in a meaningful way, not that they just didn't book an appointment, but alert them in a meaningful way, give them the coaching and instantaneous coaching on what happened, what they could have done, then they can actually make an impactful uh, impact on, on recovering that revenue that they just had lost. And what we found out over the period of time, about 25% of those patients started actually coming back. Um, and, 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 and so imagine... Look at the scenario. Imagine you're sitting there and at 906, you get this alert on your watch or your cell phone saying that, hey, a uh, patient was wanting wisdom teeth removal. All four of them talked about PPO and had insurance, but did not have insurance, wanted to come in the morning and afternoon. Wonderful. Uh, it was worth $3,300. And uh, based on this analysis, I can read that really quickly in less than 10 seconds. Um, the patient was probably not booked because 
they did not want to fill out the paperwork and people hate paperwork as we all know, right? Now, what happened in this case, this is a live example of a patient who called one of our clients. The, the, the office manager got on the call immediately with the patient saying, sir, you called us earlier. We know uh, we wanted to get you in for the wisdom teeth removal, but we can get this paperwork done on the phone 10 minutes later uh, and, and we can get you in Friday morning, eight o'clock. They recovered this patient only because they knew within, within a minute that this has happened. Um, now, if somebody asked me what part of this was done by a human, not one part of it, right? Every single aspect of this uh, instant analysis was done by a machine who was thinking like a human. After 20 million phone calls, our machines now are capable to, are capable to analyze a 10 minute conversation in less than half a second and provide insight into why things are happening the way they're happening. Uh, another example of this is, right, a person called, uh, was an emergent, went on an emergency appointment, talked about an implant, initially was confused about Medicare Advantage plan, he thought Medicare would cover this, but then was wanted to pay out of pocket, was a price shopper, um, and then here's what happened, right? The agent provided polite information, which is great. It would have been beneficial to provide potential costs or provide a payment plan option to encourage the patient to book an appointment. Um, for, for a, a set of dentures. This ability was not possible last year anywhere in healthcare, right? We were the first ones to kind of provide this instantaneous coaching and feedback driven by AI, driven by a contextual based neural network, along with a generative AI principles, combining those together uh, to, to, to drive absolute insight so that you can do something about that. This was very important to us in order to drive change. Change management came because now the office was able to fix a problem that just occurred. Um, what I, I wish I could see you guys and, 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 and see your interaction because it, it, it makes it, this is just by myself. Um, all I see is myself and um, it's really weird. Uh, but thank you for listening. I hope it's resonating with you guys. One of the big things we, we thought about and as we noticed and we gave AI more and more things to do, right? Initially, we wanted to know who called. Then we wanted to know why did they call. Then we wanted to know were they booked or not booked, whether they existing or new patient. But then the hardest part to, to deliver for the AI to figure out was why did the patient not book? And lo and behold, since 2000 and, uh, 2020, when the pandemic happened, this number for scheduling started going up. So we started figuring out that the number one reason why patients were not booking an appointment was because they just couldn't have an available slot on the appointment. And that started a, a, a monumental change management um, uh, initiative in the organizations we serve by doctors, by hygienists, by looking at their schedules and figuring out their blocks to make sure that we are not making the patients wait 21 days or 30 days to come in for an appointment. So understanding, right? Because it's easy to say, I'm not growing and maybe I need to spend more money on marketing. That's the easy thing to say. But what the hard part is figuring out really what the micro metric is. If 40% of people are not able to schedule because I don't have any availability, then that I need to fix that. I have a supply problem, not a demand problem. And again, we, we, we finally gave this to AI last year uh, to figure out, and AI is actually more accurate than humans are uh, in, in figuring out why patients are not scheduling. Pricing insurance, considering it's something that we uh, we provide. So imagine your office in Tampa, and you have this report from Patient Prism saying that, oh my goodness, I mean, August, in the month of August, uh, in the Tampa office, 14 patients couldn't book because of availability. 10 patients didn't, couldn't book because of price. 14 people hung up on hold. Right? 10 people had insurance problems. And between the first two things, scheduling and hung up on hold, that's 28 patients who are who are just not able to come in because either we don't have operational capacity to, to put them somewhere, or we don't have the operations capacity to actually answer the phone. And, and so imagine that, right? So what's the solution? Do we spend more money on marketing and piss more people off? Probably not, right? Uh, what we want to do is figure out hey, let's create maybe a third column. Let's figure out how our hygienist uh, uh, can be assisted with another assistant and we can get more people, to, more patients to be seen. Those are the problems we want to solve. And so the, the, the idea of AI 
was, was here to really tell us why, why we were not growing, right? Despite spending money on marketing, why we were not growing. We're not growing because we have no capacity and we can't answer the phone. That's important. And, and, and so, so these kind of insights have really, really been powerful in, in driving change management at the office level, at the clinician level, at the, at the office manager level, because now we know how to think about what the real problem is instead of focusing on what we think the problem might be. Um, one of the big things we talk about is cancellations. You know, we, we developed uh, an AI system that allowed us to look at cancellations in real time and saying, all right, well, if we're having cancellations, what do we do with that? How do we fill that up, right? We don't have a price line in dentistry where we can just fill up that up and uh, fill up the hotel room in no time. So what we do, what do we have to do? Do we have to send you solution reach or patient engagement platforms to fill those seats in? Do we make phone calls to these people? And so a lot of our clients are triaging that in real time. But being able to triage that in real time is a luxury. And AI allows us to understand that, man, cancellations are popping up one after another, after another, after another. And we need to do something about that. Not connected calls are the calls that are not answered during business hours. Really important, really important for us to understand that. Um, one big ask for a lot of our clients was, I want to understand my, my, my front team's performance. And I want AI to understand that. So we developed a voice fingerprint system that allowed you to, to put a biometric um, a scan of your voice so that we knew it was Jessica and Felicia and Patty and Amanda and how they were doing with respect to, to actually uh, booking appointments. And, and if you look at this chart, you look at Amanda uh, was doing a phenomenal job. She booked 32 out of 37 patients uh, at an average rate at seven and a half minutes per call. But Yvette uh, uh, down below there uh, was only able to schedule 28 out of 41 at a 68% clip, right? But also by also spending more money on the on on the call for average duration. So what that told me was that if I got this information in, in in real time, I knew that Amanda was my superstar, and she was doing it uh, in, in an incredible way. And I want to model her behavior. Uh, I want to create a, a mechanism where we can figure out how Yvette can rise up to the same level. And 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 also instead of you know obviously we were missing all those phone calls. Remember. For uh, so many people were just hung up on hold, but Yvette was spending a lot of time on the phone talking to a patient. So, so that those kind of these micro metrics, as I call them, that are figured out by AI, are able to now uh, are allowing us to make changes in people's behaviors by telling them like, hey, objectively, here's what I think Yvette you should be doing. I think you should call keep, keep the, the conversation more concise and maybe using some of the tools that patient prism is giving you uh, have start having better conversations. And we have lots of AI based uh, analyses and recommendations that we can give a vet to say, by the way, you don't offer financing when a patient calls and doesn't have insurance, or you don't ever they offer them an appointment time or day. And those are AI driven recommendations that are coming to Yvette in real time so that she can now make minor adjustments, those minor two millimeter adjustments that can make the biggest difference in our performance. Um, one of the, the last slide on patient prism is, is really <clears throat> about, about patient mix. I know in dentistry, we talk about provider mix. Uh, we talk about payer mix. We want to have the right type of insurances and fee for service in order to make the most amount of money. But it's also important to understand, are you seeing the right type of patients, right? A, and, and one of the great metrics is this production per hour metric by doctor, right? And that really allows us to tell us uh, if, if I am seeing, if I am busy, am I the right kind of busy? And one of the reports we provide to our customers is that, great, I'm busy. Well, wonderful doctor, you're busy, but why aren't you growing at more than two, 3% a year? Well, you're not growing because most of the patients you're seeing are flying in basic economy, right? If, if the airlines, if, if Delta Airlines and American Airlines and all these airlines sold all basic economy seats, they would never make any money. Right? They would never do that. So, so the idea is to have the right patient mix of the right patients of hygiene or the, the new patients from orthodontic or surgery. And you want to be able to understand that, man, I'm able to get all my all my hygiene patients in. That's great. Wonderful. We need to get them in and you know, get take, take, taken care of. But what about what about why? Why does somebody who needs Invisalign has to wait four weeks and five weeks? To do that. And we have a report that shows us that. Like I, there's a report you could pull up in our system that says 
44% of orthodontic patients have to wait five weeks. And that's not acceptable because you're spending on an average $200 to drive that lead in. That's what I meant by cost per acquisition, cost per lead. If you don't understand that metric, then you're like, all right, well, what the hell? I'm busy, but I'm not the right kind of busy. Super important to go down and leveraging micrometrics. And this, again, this is only possible if, if uh, with the advent of AI and, and, and you guys should think about that stuff before you start you know, spending more money on marketing. One of the big companies that I follow a lot is, is uh, I've been involved in AI for about eight years. Um, I had lots of radiology friends before I got in dentistry. And, and, and in radiology, AI has done an immense job. And about five years ago, six years ago, dentistry started getting involved uh, in, in looking at radiographs. Uh, right now, it's, I think, bite wings. And, um, and um, um, I believe it's bite wings and... Um, I'm blanking on other type of X-ray, um, but 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 you're able to now detect better than a human. You detect almost 37 percent more pathology is detected by a machine than a human in order to drive drive better diagnosis. And then many many doctors over the course of uh, many years, from Penke Spear to to um, um, uh, to some of these big institutes have said that the problem sometimes in dentistry, especially with new dentists, is, is not treatment acceptance, it's diagnosis. And um, the inconsistency of diagnosis, the studies have been done longitudinal over the years, have shown that for the same tooth, somebody will have a treatment plan worth $100 and, and worth $5,000. And the, the, the discrepancy, the, the dispersion, if you look at it, is, is tremendous. But But if you're not using today, uh, some a tool like this to help help um, help confirm what you already believe in, or to look at things that you have not seen before. Uh, I think um, you are leaving a lot of opportunity for the patient on the table as well as for revenue. Uh, the consistency at which AI detects this stuff is 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 incredible, and I've seen this deployed in many organizations where. All of a sudden, especially when they have new graduates, they have people that are coming out of dental school, um, even people who have been around for a long time that have missed things like those periapic lesions. Uh, now they're doing more root canals. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the amount of root canals being done uh, for a good valid reason are are rising, right? And and again, the the ability for the machine to detect and look at things at a very microscopic level, even more, even less than that, and make decisions about what is going on uh, is, is super important. And, and I, I definitely recommend talking to one of these companies, this is Pearl, uh, and they've had the, 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 the longest run at this uh, in, in, in the area of, of figuring out what, what the diagnosis should be. But one of the things they did also was figure out, okay, well, how do you figure out the net, an unmet treatment need and, and then look into the practice management system, natively integrated with all your, um, most of your PMS systems, uh, not PMS systems, but your 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 uh, X-ray systems. Um, and, and being able to, that native integration is what it's helping us do is, is go back to all the patients and really figure out, okay, what has been missed, right? How many, how many, how much unmet treatment have we missed? And then create these funnels, whether it's for restoration of, of 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 um, uh, replacing the restorations for crowns, whether it's uh, to um, uh, for root canals that were missed, or or lesion, or 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 just interproximal caries that were missed, it's it's creating these funnels where now we're reaching out to patients, and especially if you create them in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a way where you are uh, driving uh, using patient engagement along with this AI. To, to really have better communication with your patient. It's creating an enormous amount of goodwill uh, with the patients across the board, where now patients are like, man, my dentist uses AI and, and they figured something out way before this was gonna be a bigger problem. And uh, those colored coded things were telling me that uh, there's gonna be, uh, there is going to be a uh, you know those uh, what what do they call them incipient lesions where you, you you they figured out that this is going to be a bigger problem and they fixed it beforehand and and these stories are being happening every single day right every single day uh, more treatment is being diagnosed more treatment is being activated and reactivated leveraging 
uh, leveraging AI in a way that uh, that was never thought possible. And and for a lot of folks, it's not people think, oh my God, is this going to replace replace the doctor? It's not. Um, it is really to to make us better, and and that's that's what I feel uh, the, the the idea of AI is. It's really to unleash our X factors, right? It's it really to help us identify things better and 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 allow us more time to spend talking to the patients and earning their trust. I wish I could ask answer questions here, but uh, the the nature of the CE is that I keep talking. Uh, so I'm hoping you're enjoying it so far. Uh, one of the big challenges that is happening uh, in all of dentistry, and I guess we don't, you guys, uh, if you're a single office, you probably don't measure it, but but insurance is 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 purposefully difficult uh, on all of you know whether it's health insurance, whether it's dental insurance, it is somehow being designed to be difficult. Right, and 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 it's 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 a complex web of things that you have to do in order to file uh, the claims, in order to collect the money, in order to look at uh, you know AR. The the industry is so big, uh, you know the statistics as of last year was that about eleven percent of claims uh, were denied. Right, eleven percent, almost, and and then four percent of the claims on top of that were just lost due to inefficiencies of paperwork and stuff like that. So you're looking at over $4 billion of unpaid claims. And that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money um, that, that we're leaving off the table. And, and so what's happening is when you're writing off an average dental practice is writing off seven to 9% of their revenue every year, um, it's way too much money. It's way too much money to write off. So Zentis came about uh, a few years ago and really tried to say, could we could we figure out a different way to understand claims before they're filed? Is can we build a validation engine that is that is powered by AI that looks at how the claim should be filed? That can we build a, 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 a an, an analysis system which allows us to look at inconsistencies in filing and stuff, right? Um, whether it's a Pano or, or FMX. Uh, are we going to file for them at the same time? And does it understand those consistencies? And it's a simple example. But but we want to understand inconsistencies in filing so we can reduce the error rate. And when we reduce the error rate, we are going to get paid uh, quickly. Uh, and if we're not, then we're going to be able to have auto adjudication of that stuff. Simple things like EOBs, there was no way to standardize them across multiple uh, multiple payers. And Zentis figured out a way to do that through through, again, a combination of uh, robotic process automation, which means you're telling a, a machine how to do things that human do. That's not necessarily AI, uh, but but then you combine that with AI and you you do the human tasks that that a human is doing, and give it to a machine, and then have, have an, an AI analyze that. It's improving. It's improving um, the collection. It's improving uh, the amount of write-offs that you're doing. It's improving the claims that are not being denied. So if you are, again, uh, growing your business and, and, and you want to have a close idea on what your AR is supposed to be, your 30, 60, 90 day AR, and in addition to looking at your payers and PPO technologies and fee-for-service and raising your fees, you want to make sure that you are collecting all the dollars that are being uh, uh, produced and, and Zentist and RCM technology. I think we're at the very beginning of this RCM technology. There's a lot of interesting cool tech coming uh, from the standpoint of eligibility, verification, and everything else. Uh, so I would love for you guys to uh, check them out. Uh, the last the technology I'll talk about is OrthoFX. Uh, I, I love what these guys are doing in the space. Uh, they have done immense work in the polymer space to figure out how to create the, the best polymer that will move teeth in the perfect way. Besides that, the technologies they have around around uh, mon remote monitoring using your iPhone and your Android phone, and then figuring out how to do course correction based on uh, on that, and then being able to create a rescue aligner and send it back to you so that the patient doesn't have to come back in, is really solving a capacity problem that many orthodontists are having where patients are coming in three to four times, sometimes more than that, for their, for their aligner treatment. So I'd love for you guys to check it out. I know I'm at 53 minutes right now, so I wanna make sure I, have, I leave enough time for questions but 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 the technology is so so amazing now that it allows 
AI to figure out um, the the patterns, uh, but by just by just you know putting something in your mouth and taking pictures and uploading them, and AI is now deciding whether you are on track or not. Dental monitoring does the same thing, uh, but this is all integrated within within the system. Um, one of the big things that's happening uh, with AI and what these guys are, uh, I think they already have FDA approval or soon to be getting FDA approval on on retainers that can can detect and collect your saliva and and look at biomarkers uh, for you to determine uh, the state of your disease. So that's happening a lot and it's creating an immense amount of goodwill with, with patients. It's also helping uh, dentists retain customers because they have those returners for life and in and, and, and creating a revenue stream as well. So check them out, they're a fantastic program. They just launched a new uh, uh, aligner that you can just wear at night and it's FDA approved and you don't have to wear them in the morning. So that's that's, that's an interesting uh, tidbit about that. Uh, the last thing I'll say about this is really, how do you implement AI in your dental practice? Uh, the first thing you need to do is where do you start and how do you operationalize it? And it's really important uh, to think about instead of how, about who, and Dan Sullivan talks about his books uh, uh, about who, not how. Uh, I, I, I want you to think about that in terms of who, who can be the champion, who can get this done, uh, and what's the path of least resistance. But you want to really start with the problem, oh, but I have capacity problem, I have marketing problem, I have a case acceptance problem, and then figure out what the best technology there is, figure out the champion, and figure out who can do this. Yeah? Without who, none of the technology matters, right? The, are the largest, we have failed everywhere we have gone, uh, where we couldn't figure out the change management part. Nobody, nobody can adopt technology if you can get people, uh, if you can get get it within the workflow of the, of, of, of the dental organization. Um, understanding investment versus cost is important. Not all money you spend is is cost and goes on your PNL. Although everything goes on your PNL from a tax standpoint, investment is something that gives you money back. Right, uh, your house is a liability. And cost, but 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 a rental property is an investment. So understanding that is important, and and you want to obviously at the end of the day create create KPIs that measure success. Uh, don't start any initiative without knowing where you are, where you want to be, and how you're getting there. And as long as you measure that and have somebody accountable and own that KPI, I think you're going to be very very successful in in implementing AI. Uh, that really concludes uh, the CE part of the presentation. Um, if you want to contact me, that's the QR code. Uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, I'm quite active on LinkedIn and, and other social media networks, but LinkedIn primarily. Follow me there. I, I share a lot of this stuff, uh, not just about patient prison, but all the technologies that are out there. And I'm always willing to have a conversation about whatever you're trying to solve for. If you want to have a conversation with us, whether you try us out or not, we're happy to have a conversation and tell you at what stage of the AI journey you should be on whether you should be with us or not, whether you should do something else or not. Uh, we have the luxury of knowing how the best practices in the in this country are doing. And we have the luxury of, of, of knowing what the smartest people in dentistry are doing in terms of driving new growth, same store growth, EBITDA growth, top line growth. And we're happy to have that discussion with you, whether it's about us or some, something else that you're doing. Uh, take a QR code, patientprism.com is my contact. Amol at patientprism.com, my first name, A-M-O-L, at patientprism.com is my email. And I'm happy to take some questions. I don't have many, uh, only three minutes left. Uh, the one question that I have here is what OS are compatible? I'm assuming it's operating systems. We are cloud-based, so we don't require OS, whatever that is. Um, we, can, we can do that. Um, any questions you have, uh, feel free to put them in the thing, whether it's about AI or patient prism or anything else. I'm happy to answer them. If you want to email me questions, uh, uh, you're more than welcome to email me questions from all at patientprism.com. I'm sure. Send me your email. If you are, uh, if you like the panel today, if you have questions, send me an email and I'll make sure I answer to every one of you, uh, whether just to say hi, uh, add me on LinkedIn. Um, it's easy. Um, just type my first name and last name and um, you will see a lot of activity on my wall about everything about dentistry, about DSOs, about marketing, AI, technology, um, everything else. I talk about all of it. I'm very passionate about this industry uh, that's given me, uh, frankly speaking, uh, all my friends and I call them my extended family. It's, it's a privilege to be in dentistry where you get to make an impact on people's lives on a daily basis.